Hi, everyone, and welcome to the End of Life Journey and Beyond, The Sands of Time. My name is Lisa Strauss Lawrence, and I'm a bereavement specialist. Hello, Susan. It's so good to see you. Good morning, Lisa. It's great to see you, too. I'm Susan Cuperso, End of Life doula, legacy specialist, and trainer. So um, today, welcome, and thank you for joining us today. Today is a pretty common topic, but one that we don't all talk about or hear about unless we're going through the grieving process ourselves and start researching and reading and have books in front of us to teach us this kind of thing. So I'm very happy that we're able to talk a little bit about it today. Um, and I, I pulled some of this information from a bereavement book. Um, I, I am a volunteer for hospice as well. East End Hospice in, in New York. And uh, every year we have to go through a training, a bereavement training. And in their training book, they had some of this information. I had been researching and looking through that for something else. And I stumbled across this and I thought, wow, this is really an important topic for people who have lost somebody and who, who are going through the grieving process. So today's topic, is things we can count on when it comes to grief. Mm -hmm. okay, we don't want to count on anything when it comes yeah. to grief, honestly, <laughs> right, Lisa? Yes. You know, you don't want to count on them, but there are certain things that we're just going to bring up today that you can count on when it comes to you going through the grieving process. And that, that may help because Lisa and I are all about the pre-planning and knowing before it happens and learning and growing. And when you hear some of these things, even if it's not something that maybe you're going through in the moment, um, you'll remember when the time comes and you are flowing through that pain point and say, oh, okay, so this is this is okay. I'm supposed to be going through some of this. Yes, yes. And, you know, that's a comfort in itself to know that you're not all alone in the world and experiencing things that you don't want to experience it happens the way it should happen and and that's why we want to help you you know with some of these things tips today yes absolutely so you want to start with vulnerability yeah <laughs> we're not in control anymore wow that's a biggie Certainly yeah, feeling a change of plans in our life right uh, everything has changed everything you yeah. counted on before is done, is different. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you're going to feel frightened and helpless, right? Everything's changed now. Uh, feeling vulnerable is just one more part of it. I felt so vulnerable after I lost my husband. It made me feel like I was just a little girl Yeah. again. Like what's happening? I felt vulnerable in every aspect when I got in the car to drive somewhere, in the grocery store. Me too. You know, I was very, very vulnerable. So, so feeling helpless and vulnerable, this is a given. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I certainly felt that way uh, with my parents dying as well. You know, mm. whoever. I mean, they've left your life and they were part of your life. You know? And there's something about having your parents, aunts and uncles, um, great-grandparents. There's something... Um, that makes you feel safe, even if they're not helping you do things on a daily basis. It makes you feel safe that someone before you is here and maybe always watching over you a little bit. And when that person is gone, you know, you feel vulnerable because now you feel alone in the world. Yes. You don't have them that you can really count on anymore. Yes, right? all family members and all relationships. Um, I absolutely felt that way. I mean, I, I yeah. remember the first funeral I ever went to. I was 12 years old and it was my grandmother. And I was, we were all in these black limos. And I remember being really overwhelmed by the whole thing. You know, the, the whole, the cemetery, the whole thing it was just a. Um, and the thought of that picture in your mind never never really goes away nope does not you know you, you're talking about it today but as if it was yesterday that photo is there that's true 
because you were feeling so vulnerable. Yes. In this instance. Yes. Yes. I'm trying to digest it and put it into my, into my life. Figure out how does that fit into my life? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, another thing that you can count on in your grief is that it's definitely now moving forward, going to create change. Yes. And we talk about this in a lot of our videos, Lisa. Yes, we do. Do we do? Nothing is ever the same. It's scary, unpredictable. It's like the rug is pulled out from you. It's an unknown territory. Yes, it is. You know, it's walking into the unknown. And most of the time we have fear of the unknown because we just don't know what will happen. We're not in control. Yes. Right. So many people are are, are not control freaks, but... <laughs> Like I like being in control of things. I I like knowing what's going to happen when I go to a certain place or what it looks like, you know, both physically and in my mind and the, and the situation and the circumstances. I've since though, I've changed a little bit when it comes to that. I, I now, I look for that adventure in that I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think that, that's on a lighter scale with different things in my life, not necessarily in in the loss of a person. That change is, unless you've had a significant loss prior to, you really don't know what to expect or, or what's going to happen next. And that's scary. Sure it How is. How do you articulate that with somebody? It's not like a friend's going to stop by to bring you soup and you'll sit at the table and say, I'm so, you know, I'm scared to death of going to the grocery store or going, you know, we don't verbalize things well sometimes. So these fears, I think, are circling in our thoughts and our minds. Yeah, they absolutely are. Yeah, they absolutely are. And then comes the changes of the relationships. I mean, like friends that might be disappointing because they don't know what to say and what to do. So they may not even call. And you wish that they would. Um, and even family. I mean, you don't really know who you can count on anymore and who you should go to and what you should say or and do. This becomes this is a valid point, right? That we make in many of our videos. Yes. That that now responses to people and from people, they're kind of unpredictable now. Because changes do take place after a loss. Um, changes as simple as it, it could be a loss of, um, you know, an aunt or an uncle or a grandparent, right? And even a pet. Think about a pet. That every day you were walking that pet, and every day you were feeding that pet, and you had your bowl, and you had your. I mean, there are, there are habits, there are things that you've done in your life, and now the pet isn't there anymore. And this, is, this is the point that some people may not be as thoughtful or, or deep or un, as understanding as you. Right. So they may be thinking, but it's just a pet. Yeah. Really? Right. 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 It's just a pet. Or it was just your grandmother. I mean, okay, life goes on, you know. Right. Right. It's not she was old anyway. as easy <laughs> yes. for people to have empathy yeah. with you. That's right. You know? And that also means that you could be disappointed. Disappointed in family, disappointed in friends. It's hard. That's it's very hard. It's hurtful sometimes. It's painful. No, I didn't hear from and, people. And That's about, very hard. What about depression, Lisa? Depression, you know, you don't often know the difference now. You might not know the difference between you know, I'm grieving and I'm sad, but real depression to where you really do need to reach out and get some help. And and feeling sad and depressed just requires so much energy in your day to day. Yes. You know, you feel like that's all you're spending time is being sad and overwhelmed and you don't want it, but you also don't know how to get out of it. You know, so we've had other videos about that, about 
moving on through things. But this one's just, this video today is just about things that you can expect to happen with grief. Right, right. So relationships change and dynamics change, friendships change. Um, and so back to, again, change is inevitable because everything's different. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very challenging. Also, your priorities. I've said to so many people, you know, things are different now. You look at things differently. You act differently. You see things differently. Maybe what you took for granted before you don't take for granted now. Right. Right. And even the even in a, such a simple thing as uh, other people supporting you in your life, um, whether it be family or friends, people don't know how to support each other. Yes, sometimes. They don't. yes. And they don't know how to say or do the right thing. So there'll be things that are said or being done or acted upon or just little comments. And you, you, you will take everything personally. It's Absolutely. hard not to. Absolutely. It's hard not you to. Definitely more vulnerable. Feel like, yeah. Yeah. You're more vulnerable in everything. And I, and I think, yeah, you're more vulnerable going back to the vulnerable word. Right. But I think that um, by knowing this now, it's important. It's important for you to know this so that, you know, there is no blame and there is no guilt or shame or anger. That I think it's a big be... one. I see a lot of families, you know, because one person responded differently in the death than somebody else. And they're angry at the other person because they didn't, you know, feel the same or do the same or their sisters and brothers and sons and daughters and they're fighting because they responded differently in the grief. Yeah. It's tough. Really tough. So the dynamics change. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and another thing that you can count on when it comes to grief is really that as days go on or weeks or months, that you're going to begin to um, redefine your priorities in such a way Yep. in life because you do feel a little bit, a lot different mm -hmm. than you did before the loss. So some things might be, not be as important as they were to you before. Right. And it might give you a feeling of, well, I don't care. Mm -hmm. I just don't care. That's right. I don't care what I do, who I see. You may want to spend more time alone. You know, um, you just have to have those boundaries and know when it's too much or not. But yeah. good things, <laughs> good priorities can come out of a loss too. Yeah. yeah. Like learning more about yourself, doing some more reading to understand the things that are happening. Um, you may find uh, a whole new self that you didn't even know yeah. about before because you defined yourself as a daughter or as a son or as a spouse or as whatever. And all of a sudden, without that other person, you get to see another side of yourself. You know, you get to recognize who you are standing alone, which is really interesting. When I decorated my apartment, I realized it was the first time that I had done something on my own like that in over 33 years. You know, everything had been a joint choice and a joint decision and a... You know, and all of a sudden I was doing the whole apartment myself. And by the way, I loved it. It was really wonderful picking out all the furniture all by myself. So one bedroom apartment and, you know, I sold my house, big change, but real feeling of independence and, and autonomy. It was really different. It was, it felt great. It really felt great. After I got you know, I over the loss that. of the house. You know, again, change, know, go back I, to change, go back to change. I can relate to that as far as still now, still now, seven years later, I still get that feeling when I go into the grocery store because food was a big part of our lives. 
and cooking big meals were a big part of our lives. Mm -hmm. And that used to be overwhelming for me to think about everything to buy for this and for that. And, you know, my husband was a big, big man, you know, he was six foot eight and loved his food. And now I'd shop for me. Mm -hmm. You know, my mm -hmm. boys are older and they're taken out or going out or, you know, I don't eat with them anymore. It's just me. But I remember going to the grocery store just this past week and I've decided to start eating, you know, a lot more salads than I was, than I was, you know, a lot more fruit and vegetables. So I feel like the hundred dollars that I spent was on all of that kind of food. And I could just do that for me. Yeah. And it was kind of cool. Yeah. That yeah. was kind of cool. But you you know, your priorities will shift. Things will change, you know, and we talk about that a lot in the videos, but you know, one thing that we will, that you will learn as these priorities and changes shift is not to take other things for granted. That's true. So your, your personality may change because of the changes that have been thrown your way. Your personality may change a little now and becoming more appreciative and grateful for the things that you still do have and in your life. And one other thing that that can occur after you know during grief is that you want more of an understanding um, about the spirituality in your life, you know whatever that may be. You know if you it doesn't matter what religion you are or if you're not religious and you just consider yourself a Christian or a spiritual person, find find those ways. Um, to really dive into some some of those beliefs because and and people do when they they're suffering with grief because they want answers mm -hmm. to things that they don't have answers yes. to yes so and sometimes that really really helps yes that really helps quiet your mind and bring you some more peace so it can definitely grief increases your spiritual awareness um and it helps you. It helps you to think about the known and the unknown out there in life. And you know, you want questions answered, really. So there's a struggle for inner peace, definitely, yes. when you've gone through a loss, whether it was a tragedy or not. You want that peace, right? Right within yourself. Yes, yes. yes. And interesting about compassion. Um, grief tears down all kinds of. Um, they call them boundaries, but I, I just call them like fences that people put up. Um, but when you're grieving, it looks for more humanity. You 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 just seem to be more uh, giving, more loving, more aware um, of people, of life, of everything. Because you see again how life is so precious and yeah. you never know. You never know. So, you know, I see this as a positive. Me too. Me too. Right? Like with the spiritual awareness, I see this, the compassion that, a renewed compassion towards people or things or life in general. I see that as a positive. And me too. Me too. You know? Yeah. Um, and then opening doors. It's really interesting when you think about opening doors, that grief can define the past and open doors to the future. Mm -hmm. I I feel like if you're open, I tell people you can create a new life for yourself. You can actually develop new relationships, new opportunities, um, unexpected situations, which may you've never encountered before, because now you're in a different place. You're in a different spot. Um, and it's interesting. As with this, anything in life, Lisa. Yes, it you is. Think of a college student with colleges ended now. Yeah. You know, that door that you've spent so many years in school is closing to what? The fear of the unknown or excitement in, right. in the journey to come. Right. So when we talk about closing doors and opening doors, it could be from a divorce. It could be um, from a friendship that's not the same anymore. Yeah. And a door is closed. But what are the possibilities for a new door opening? 
Yes. And that's really, really important to know that when you do go through grief, those look out for those doors and know that the changes are there, the seasons are changing, and now it's time to open a few of those new doors and see what what it can hold for us. Yeah. I know you talk about that all the time. I do. I do. You know, I just went to a widow widowers group yesterday that we belong to. And, you know, these people would never be my friends had we not shared this, you know, and they come to our summer parties and we see them, you know, occasionally. And um, it's, it's really, it has opened a whole new door for different acquaintances, people who I would never have anything in common with, but this is our commonality, you know? Yeah. <laughs> new activities, new things that you've never done before. That's right. So expect doors to close now and expect to see new doors open in unexpected ways. Yes. Always have an open heart and mind because <laughs> it's very easy to close yourself off during It is. Day. It is. It's easy. It's simple. It That's seems like it's safe. Part. It seems like it's, it's an safe. easier thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's safe to wear your jammies most of the day and to be covered up by that blanket and to get involved in movies one after another. And But it's important to read and it's important to learn and it's important to find ways to open those new doors. And it'll be hard at first. Sure. It will be hard. Just you'll want to cancel whatever you have planned right. and not walk out that door. Right. But I think that um, it's important. It's an important move for you to make. And, and that's happened to me many times, you know, throughout the years. And I just don't want to go. I want to call and cancel right now. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. And guess what? Once I get there, yeah, I'm so happy that I went. Yeah. And it really became a fulfilling afternoon or evening. And in, with enjoyable conversation and being in the world with other people. And, you know, yeah. you have to push yourself to do certain yeah. things. We've talked about the anticipation and I'll say it again. Sometimes the anticipation is so much worse. Anticipation of a birthday, of a, a date, a death date, um, you know, an anniversary. Um, and sometimes it's just thinking about that before it happens. That is the problem. Once it's there. And you do whatever it is you're thinking of doing or planned or somebody else helped you plan something or maybe you got pushed into something. It's such a surprise. Wow. This was better than I thought. This is easier than I thought. This has worked out better than expected. You know? Yeah. And, you know, and if, and if you in your own journey have found things that you knew you could count on and that happened to you, please feel free to leave any messages, um, you know, down below the video because Lisa and I are always learning, you know, looking to learn as well. And we only know from our history and from the people that we've worked with about certain experiences. So there are important things that we may be leaving out of this video. Yeah, and, so and I wanna mention again, or... grieving is such a personal experience. It's such a personal mm -hmm. journey. You know, we can, you know, say what we understand and what we've read and what we've seen and what we've only you know, experienced, but we're all different people. We all have different growing up experiences and, you know, our lives are all different. So, um, yeah. you know, I've been asked a lot of times, when, when am I in trouble? <laughs> you know, um, and it's a thin line because it's okay to be depressed and that's normal. The problem is where you detach yourself from the world so much that you don't come out <laughs> ever, <laughs> you know, and maybe you stop eating and maybe you stop everything in your life, you know, and you don't. And maybe, and maybe you don't have the circles around you or a big enough support right. system to yeah. recognize this. Correct. So it's really important, I think. To know that some of these things can happen and to know where that that breaking point is yeah. and to really support and love yourself enough to say, hey, whoa, this isn't right. Yeah. You know, this isn't getting any better. This is I'm going in the wrong direction. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's not a time frame because people say, okay, so it's been a year and that's that. It's not a time frame. It's more your own internal clock and how you work in your life. Because everybody's different. You know, after two years, I absolutely wanted to date. There's no question I was absolutely ready. But in my book, my my second book about moving forward, after four months, this guy was ready. His children were crazed about it. But this guy was really ready to date. And he did. And he's been with her for a long time after his wife died. So you can't even say it's got to be this time or, you know, rules. It's not about rules. It's within your own life. It's how you see And your- on the other spectrum, you have people like somebody I know who is just not ready to date. You know, two years was nothing to me. This is how we're all different. Four months, I think that, oh, you you know, oh, we all have our own opinions. Like, how could you even think of that? Two years, much too soon for me, you know? So what is the right amount of time? And again, we're all different. We are. We're all yeah. just different. We are. And we worry. We you worry know? about our friends. And I mean, I got a phone call from somebody who's worried about a grandmother. And when I spoke to the grandmother, she said, my children and grandchildren should leave me alone. <laughs> I'm doing fine. You know, it's interesting, the perception, of course, from the outside versus, you know, your own self and the inside. Um, we all grow up in different ways and do. see different things and experience different things. Somebody who's experienced a lot of loss will react totally different to, to, than to somebody who's experienced no loss in their life yes and they feel like they were just hit in the head with a baseball bat that's right you know so it's all different and wherever you are that's okay but these today i hope these little things helped as far as knowing what you can count on with grief and what to expect along the way yes yes and take a look at some of our other videos too and you know share them uh, an individual video with maybe a friend who's going through that particular topic we try and title these correctly so you know what the subject is about and to make it easier for you to share with some of the people you know yes yes right yes so talk about so something that- new peace peace and love and you want to talk about what we do um besides my uh, end of life doula work um i help will create a legacy uh, to leave for their future generations. And it's a project that I work on for a few weeks with an individual. You can reach me at any of the information above and I can share that with you. And I'm actually um, training others to do that exact project with people to um, to get the to get the task done in bigger circles around us because it's really important and it's a passion of mine to be able to, you know, teach our future generations about our history and about our life experiences and our memories because it helps families in so many ways. So you can reach out to me about that. And Lisa? That's a popular program. I want to mention that program, by the way, about finding your roots. I forgot the guy's name, but he does an amazing job of this, um, you know, legacy and family work and goes all the way back amazing work and it's um and he brings a lot of very famous people in to show the different you know um family structure and and make relationships it's it's really interesting so people are interested in this and it, it's good work really good work you know i'm available for individual work but i'm also i would love to hear from people if there was something in you know specifically that they want to deal with i did a thing on holidays because it's so stressful for people but if there are other things that they want to um you know they believe they need to do in a group support groups are wonderful i really believe in them i believe that they help people not feel alone in what they're going through as a commonality there um and i think that that support really helps people get through difficult times so if there are subjects or, or types of, you know, grief, um, bereavement processes and stuff, I'm I'm open to that. So, excellent. 
Yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, and yep. we will see you next week. We will. Okay, take care, everybody. Bye.